morning. Welcome to our worship here at St. John's. I hope it's warm enough for you inside. It is truly a blessing to gather together to give thanks and praise to our God. This morning we will begin with a confession and forgiveness as printed in the front cover of your bulletin. If you would stand and face the cross at the back of the sanctuary. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what you have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, hymn number 288. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For 
the peace from above and for salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. To the people who returned to Jerusalem after the exile, the prophet proclaims that the Lord's salvation will fully come to pass. Jerusalem will become a shining light to the nation, and righteousness and praise will spring up as surely as the earth puts forth vegetation. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in the spring to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see, shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Please join me in a responsive prayer of Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him in all the nations. Praise him in all the 
Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Mountain and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. The second reading is from the book of Galatians, chapter 4. Paul seeks to show the Galatians that the purpose of Christ's birth was to liberate us from the law's condemnation so that we would be fully adapted into God's family as sons and daughters. Galatians 4, chapters, verse 4 through 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of the Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As this morning's Gospel reading is extended, please be seated at this time. <clears throat> when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined 
for the rising and falling of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, Jesus' parents returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, was filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, we're going to collect the noisy offering here this morning. And I see that we've got at least one brave little child under the age of 10. Would you please help us today? And my dear, what is your name, sweetheart? Would you like to help us today? Adults, if you'd get your noisy offerings ready, it's the last Sunday of the month. The noisy offering, of course, goes to support Lutheran Mideast development and already, without counting December, in the first 11 months alone, more than $2,300 have been raised simply by the change in your cushions and under the car mat. So head on out, kids. You can grab the noisy offering. All right. What a joyful sound to all the Lord, huh? Just out of pocket change. Do you want to grab it too, honey? No. You'd like to pass. Very good. You got some, Carla? All right. Here we go. You're missing out, Grace. I'm beating you to the punch. All right. Don't be so somber. It's only 15 degrees below zero outside. Thank you very much. Daniel, Caden, thank you very much. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from the one who brings God's light and love and warmth in every season of the year. Amen. This morning, uh, we didn't have the front door opened right away, and so Rod, you'll have to give him a hard time after church, or give me a hard time, he had to walk all the way around the outside of the building to get to the doors that were open here on the south side, and so you win the award today for greatest perseverance, indeed. The National Weather Service says that it's 15 below right now out at the airport. That's always a, an accurate reading. It's kind of nice that we can do this on our phones today. After all, it's called the forecast, right? It's never called the aftercast. Sometimes people like to know what the weather was, right? But the most important thing that we are curious about is what the weather will be, yes? And so it's called the forecast, for we seek to look ahead. We want to know what the future might have in store. We would like to plan and prepare so that we might not be caught off guard, without a coat on or gloves, having to walk all the way around the church when the pastor forgot to unlock the front door, right? We'd like to know what's coming, what to expect. And wouldn't it be nice if, like Simeon and Anna, wouldn't it be nice if we would know what to expect and anticipate, 
because the Holy Spirit would have revealed to us, as it had revealed to Simeon, as it showed to Anna, that Simeon would not taste death before seeing the Lord's Messiah. What a forecast. What a word. What a note of encouragement. What would I do to have this kind of revelation, this moment of epiphany? Huh? That we would be able to see with our own eyes the Lord's Messiah. That we would not taste death before holding him in our own hands. Why not have a sign? Why has God not revealed this message in such a fashion, in the same way that he did to Simeon and Anna? Why not send the angel Gabriel like he does for Mary and Joseph? That we would hear, that we would see, that we would be able to know and trust, have confidence and assurance. But then we don't have to back up too much further before Mary and Joseph, right? What does the angel Gabriel say to Joseph? Do not be afraid to take her as your wife, for behold, the child that she carries is from the Holy Spirit. Joseph says, okay. The angel Gabriel says to Mary, you're going to have a child. She says, how can this be, since I'm a virgin? Her words really, though, are different in tone from John the Baptist's father, right? Do you remember how John the Baptist was married to Elizabeth? Elizabeth is the relative of Mary. And as the angel Gabriel visits Joseph and Mary, so also the angel comes to John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, and says the same thing to Zechariah that the angel says to Mary and Joseph, but Zechariah's response, though it uses the same words, or nearly so, must be in fact quite different in tone of voice. There must have been a hint of sarcasm or even skepticism in Zechariah's words. How is this possible for I'm already an old man? He says to the angel, it's as though he's forgotten the story of Father Abraham and Mother Sarah, right? And what does Gabriel say to Zechariah? Because you have not believed what the messenger of God has been entrusted to share with you, because you have not believed, so you will be struck silent, mute, until the child is to be born. So maybe I should be careful what I wish for. Because at least in Zechariah's case, seeing, even seeing an angel, does not necessarily mean believing. St. Paul puts it this way when he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Right? And by the way, that is the passage that is most commonly read at weddings. Jean, do you remember, was that the passage read at your wedding? It's Jean and Marion's 60th anniversary as of the 29th, so just a couple of days ago. So congratulations and God's blessings to you. And after the service with coffee, you'll have to tell us what your secret is for 60 years of happy, lifelong marriage. Congratulations. In that chapter that we read so often, in weddings, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where St. Paul talks about love. The chapter begins really at the end of chapter 12. The Corinthians have been vying against one another about who's got the greatest spiritual gift. And Paul says, all of this is nonsense. If you want to know what the greatest spiritual gift is, if you want to seek the highest and best form, then look no further than the act of love. You know what Paul writes? 
Love is patient, love is kind, it's not envious or arrogant or boastful or rude, does not insist on its own way. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. God's love, God's love for us in Jesus Christ never ends. St. Paul says, when we think of everything that we can see on the face of this earth and all that has been created, all of these things will pass away, but God's love will not pass away. St. Paul says, when I was a child and not yet mature, I thought like a child, I acted like a child, I spoke like a child, but when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways, and I stopped insisting, Paul says, if I may paraphrase, I stopped insisting on the necessity of seeing with my eyes. Because now we see dimly as though in a mirror. Now, you guys look at a mirror this morning, right? When you're brushing your hair and brushing your teeth. And the mirror is great. But in St. Paul's day, mirrors were not nearly so beautiful and bright. It was more like looking into a silver platter that hadn't been polished for many years. It was tarnished with age and dim and foggy. This is what Paul means when he says, presently, when we look for the face of God, when we try to see Jesus with our eyesight, it is as though we see in a mirror dimly. But the day will come when we will see face to face when we will see Jesus just as clearly as you and I see one another at present today. At the moment, we do not walk by sight, but rather by faith. We would like to know what the future holds, that we could look ahead and see what was on down the road so that we could plan and prepare and decide whether we need to wear the heavy coat or just the light jacket to church on Sunday morning. But in matters of faith, as in matters of meteorology, we can only see just a little ways down the road. And the distance which we can see, in terms of faith, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary for us to use our eyes. For what does Jesus say to Thomas when Thomas demands? I will not believe unless I can see his side and put my fingers into the wounds on his hands. A week later, Jesus appears before Thomas. He says, touch me. You can see that a ghost does not have flesh and blood like I do. But I tell you, Thomas, do you believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the good news is this, that though we cannot yet see with our eyes, the day will come when we shall stand face to face with the Lord Jesus. The good news is also that until that time, when we stand with Simeon and Anna and all the saints in light, until that day, what God does reveal to us, to each of us, to all the world, will be enough that despite the fact that our eyesight is dim and our vision is sometimes cloudy, we will be able to know and trust that we have been adopted into God's family, that we are heirs with Jesus Christ, and that we now have the prerogative, the right, to cry out, Abba, Father. Thanks be to God for the love of our Lord Jesus and for the gift of the Holy Spirit that sustains us all our life. Peace be with you, dear sisters and brothers. Amen. Let's join our voices in singing hymn number 300 and let's multiply the sound. Let's rise at this time and sing together.
Let us now join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, for this is what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as you prepare your hearts for prayer. Draw near to God as children and heirs of Christ's promise. We pray for all the people of God, for our nation and our world, and for those in need. We pray for the faith communities of this town and the surrounding areas, the state, and our country and our world. Help us to see ourselves in our neighbors, especially those who are different from us. Draw us together in common service to those who are hungry and poor and oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, for those who wait in the shadow of death, for those who are ill, for those who struggle to see the future, and for all who lack even their basic needs. Transform them with the vision of eyes that have seen the salvation of our Lord. We pray for those in need this morning. We ask that your healing hand be placed upon them. Barry and Cliff, and Dean, and Tim, and Alma, Ken, Morgan, Bridget, Alice, Pam, and Jane, and all others that we name in our hearts. We pray prayers of sympathy especially for the McGinnis family, for Greg as he lost his mother, Doris, and laid her to rest and celebrated her life and celebrated her entrance into the church triumphant. We pray for Christy, whose grief is fresh, as she grieves the loss of her mother, Loretta. Be with the entire family, brothers, sisters, grandchildren, friends. Be with them all as they grieve, as they celebrate, celebrate the Lord, that the Lord is with them. And the Lord is truly holding Loretta in a beautiful, beautiful place. Lord, in your mercy, into your outstretched arms, O oh God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the light and life of the world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace and Happy New Year with our friends and family in Christ.
And now we continue our worship as we give of ourselves, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Let us worship. Let us pray. God with us, you came as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are at blessing ordinary things. And then through these gifts, help us to bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The table is ready and all are welcome. Come now. stand for the blessing and prayer. 
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God with us, you came as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are at blessing ordinary things. And then through these gifts, help us to bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. Amen. Let us join in our sending hymn, which is hymn number 299. How appropriate. Cold December flies away. That would be good. Please be seated for just a minute. Kay, I'm going to have you advance the slides for me. I don't have the clicker with me this morning. Please do take your bulletins home with you and remember the people who are listed in prayers on page six throughout the week. Thank you. Next slide. If you're visiting today, welcome. We invite you to grab one of the bags on your way out of church. And congratulations to Kinley K. Elaine Van Otterloo, who was baptized last Saturday, not last night, but the Saturday before that. What a beautiful picture, and make sure you say congratulations to Judge Brian and Kay Michelson up top. So thank you and congratulations. It's a great present this time of year. If you could help us with Meals on Wheels, January is the month that St. John's is assigned to make those deliveries. It takes about half an hour uh, through the work week, Monday through Friday, and you can join me. It's always a good time. It's a lot of fun and it's only a little bit of work. So you can sign up out in the narthex. Thank you. We're going to be undecorating. Oh, it's gone this Tuesday morning. So if you can help us at 9 o'clock in the morning, we'll get started on Tuesday. And if you, um, oh, don't forget to take home your poinsettia. That's what I was going to say next. But I'm going to segue to the Volunteer Appreciation Day. 
And we have such great volunteers and staff here at St. John's. We want to say thank you to all of you. Uh, we're going to have, in two weeks' time, on the 14th, uh, reception after the second service. And so we hope that you can attend. It's a wonderful time. We do ask that you RSVP so that we can know how much food to plan for. So thank you and welcome, and uh, we hope to see you on that day. There's the poinsettia uh, announcement. Please take them home with you before the 7th. Okay? And your offering envelopes are out in the lobby, too. Thank you very much. And, oh, if you'd like to make a 2017 donation, it needs to be made in 2017 for IRS purposes. Thank you very kindly from the bottom of our hearts. And with that, we invite you to please rise for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we did have one announcement. It's uh, oh, you talked about it in the sermon. And, but it, it can yes. always bear repetition. Gene and Mary and Gunther, 60 years. Congratulations again. <laughs> and so we say, Happy New Year. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>